Modern day clubbells look similar to a weighted bat, with a long grip shaft and concentrated mass at the other end. The clubbell has four parts. Starting from the bottom is the barrel head, where the center of mass is. Moving upwards is a region of transition where the geometry tapers and becomes narrower. This is called the cone. Above the cone is the neck or shaft, where one grips the clubbell. The knob at the end terminates the neck and serves the purpose of grip confirmation. All clubs may be used singly or in pairs. As a novice club swinger, form and perfecting technique are imperative. Poor form and sloppy technique will easily get one injured, as will attempting progressions beyond one's personal mastery and physical readiness. The technical swipe can be broken down into three parts. The front swing, clean into order position. From order position, perform the arm cast. Start in the silver back ready position to perform the movement preps leading up to the technical swipe. The silver back position is a sit back position. The rocket movement prep drill demonstrates how the body acts as a piston system to power the clubs in short arcs, activating the glutes, hamstrings, quads, calves, and core. The clubs are an extension of one's arms with a concentric grip and eccentrically loaded arms, essentially in traction. The rocket movement prep is used to prime the body for more complex movement as a tensegrity system. The front swing builds on the rocket as overall movement is larger in span. The up position of the semi squat from the rocket is now a full hip snap extension when the club bell is in front. It is this driving force and kinetic energy from feet to the legs, gluteals, core, and hips that transfers to the club bell. The front swing is not meant to be shoulder or arm dominant. The athlete's arm guides the club bell in the circular path of motion as opposed to using upper body brute force to move the club through the path. Imagine coupled center of masses. After the front swing, one breaks the club's momentum and catches the club into order position. This is the clean portion of the swipe. From the order position, keeping the 90 degree elbow flexion and straight wrist, perform a slow and controlled arm cast. Slip the barrel close to the body past the ear and behind using shoulder flexion and bring it back down into order with controlled shoulder extension. The technical swipe skill occurs in this sagittal plane. Starting from the ground up, we have the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion of the ankle, knee flexion and extension, ballistic hip flexion and extension, shoulder flexion and extension, elbow flexion and extension, and wrist radial to ulnar deviation. With club swinging for strength and conditioning, both the lumbopelvic hip complex and the shoulder complex must have mobility and stability. It is this foot ground interface or ground reaction force that drives the club swing of the technical swipe skill. The athlete pushes into the ground and the ground pushes back. This is demonstrated in the rocket drill by the piston-like action of the lower body as the athlete prepares for the bigger movements of the front swing and technical swipe which use ballistic hip flexion and extension. The hip snap or ballistic flexion and extension of the lumbopelvic hip complex drives the force downwards through the feet and transmit ground reaction force up through the kinetic chain again. This hip snap is very similar to the mechanics of the hard style kettlebell basic swing with a hip hinge squat movement pattern characterized by rapid muscle activation relaxation cycles of the hip flexors and extensors. Both the kettlebell basic swing and the club bell rocket drill and front swing are hip dominant exercises. Hip dominance is when the ratio of hip to knee extensor moments is greater than one, indicating greater hip involvement. This ratio of hip to knee extensor moments has been found to increase with increasing load during squats, lunges, and deadlifts. This hip to knee extensor moments ratio also increases with increasing demands for speed, such as in running or jumping. These observations indicate a shift from knee dominance at lower intensities to hip dominance at higher intensities. The lumbopelvic hip is an important keystone structure linking the lower and upper body and multiple muscle slings. By continuously shifting weight from the midfoot towards the forefoot and back, a anterior-posterior component 
of the ground reaction force is introduced, which helps to power the swing anteriorly and posteriorly. This foot-ground interface transfers force through the kinetic chain, which allows work to be accomplished. Think of the club as a pendulum, with the athlete's arm as the pendulum's arm. The bottom position or the lowest point in the swing represents the expression of maximum kinetic energy. Likewise, the top portion or the highest portion in the swing represents the maximum potential energy of the club. This swing cycle demonstrates the conservation of energy in the transformation of kinetic energy to potential energy and vice versa. After the front swing, the athlete catches the club into order position followed by the arm cast. Positive mechanical work is accomplished in the shoulder flexion from order to the arm cast behind. The club's center of mass at the barrel moving in an arc in the same direction as the athlete's effort. This would be the concentric phase. Negative mechanical work is accomplished on the return to order, shoulder extension, similar to the lowering phase in a bench press. This is because the club's center of mass at the barrel will tend to keep pulling downwards due to gravity in opposition to the athlete's effort to return the club to order position. This would be the eccentric phase. While physiologically the athlete expended effort and energy, the sum total of mechanical work accomplished from order position to arm cast and back to order position is zero. If we imagined all the mass of the club bell concentrated at one point called the point mass, it would be located near the barrel end of the club. Swinging the club in the sagittal plane, the shoulder joint would be the pivot rotating about the medial lateral axis. The distance from the shoulder joint to the club's point mass would be the moment arm distance. Think of the arm and club as one unit, like a human pendulum. The arc created by the club bell's path of travel may be described as the angular displacement or arc length. If the angle is kept at a constant, the path of the club may be changed by varying the moment arm distance. The athlete can grip the club closer to the knob, thereby maximizing the distance from the shoulder joint to the point mass of the club. Or the athlete can choke up by gripping the club closer to the cone or barrel. For the technical swipe, the club travels a larger arc created by the front swing, and from the order position to arm cast, the club travels a much smaller arc. By gripping closer to the knob and maximizing the moment arm distance, the athlete is making the exercise more difficult. Progression. More work is required to move the club through a greater arc length. By choking up and reducing moment arm distance, the athlete is regressing the exercise. Less work is required to move the club through a smaller arc length. Consider keeping the angular displacement the same, which means the athlete does not change the grip position along the club's neck. In order to increase angular velocity, one must reduce the amount of time it takes for the club to travel the arc. That means swing faster. Transitioning to a faster swing requires angular acceleration. Swinging faster increases the exercise density. Likewise, to regress any club swinging exercise, one may slow down, decelerate the swing and decrease exercise intensity. Centripetal force is the component of force that keeps the point mass of the club traveling in an arc or circular path directed towards the point of rotation, which is the shoulder, along the arm. If the athlete were to lose grip and let go of the club, the club would escape from its motion path and fly out of control, possibly hitting something or injuring someone. The athlete has to exert a firm grip on the club. During the swing, the athlete can feel this centripetal force as an eccentric load on the arm. Essentially, the shoulder remains in a packed position and the arm is in traction, experiencing both the pull of the club away from the arm and shoulder and having to eccentrically counter that. The basic kettlebell swing rocket drill, and club bell front swing impose additional shearing forces on the spine due to the centripetal centrifugal force interaction. These movement patterns require spinal stability, which is optimized when maintaining spine neutral form and hip hinging correctly. The moment of inertia describes the quantity of angular inertia that is necessary to change a system's current state of angular motion. Remember that the club should really be thought of as an extension of the arm. By choking up the grip and reducing the system's radius of gyration, the athlete has less moment of inertia to overcome in order to get the club swinging. Less force and less energy is required. 
In order to make the exercise more difficult, the athlete may grip the club closer to the knob, thus increasing the system's radius of duration. The athlete will have a greater moment of inertia to overcome in order to get the club swinging. More force and more energy is required. The measure of force that causes something to rotate is directly proportional to the moment of inertia and angular acceleration. So you can see that for any given club bell technique or skill, there are at least three ways to either progress or regress the difficulty. One, changing the mass of the club bell. Two, changing the grip placement on the neck of the club. And three, changing the intensity by swinging the club faster or slower.